Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about OSPF areas. As you learned already with our link state routing protocols, every router learns the full picture of its part of the network, including every router, its interfaces, and what they connect to. And this can cause issues in large networks. Because every router knows about every link, there's going to be a lot of routes in its routing table and that can take up too much memory. Also, if there's a change in the network, like a new link being added or a link going down, that causes all routers to reconverge, which takes time and CPU resources. And the larger the network is, the bigger impact that this is going to have. So to mitigate against this, OSPF supports a hierarchical design which segments large networks into smaller areas. Each router maintains full information about its own area, but only summary information about other areas. So the routers are going to have less routes in their routing table, and if a new link comes up or goes down in another area, it's not going to affect that router. You'll see how that works later when I show you an example later in this lecture. So with our areas, we have a two-level hierarchy. At the top level, we've got the transit area, also known as the backbone or area zero. It does not generally contain end users when we've got a multi-area network. And then we've got our regular areas, also known as our non-backbone areas, which hang below area zero. They're used to connect end users to the transit area. By default, all transit traffic goes through the transit area. So you see the example diagram here, we've got area zero and area one and area two are hanging off of there. Any traffic between other areas, not area zero, always has to go through area zero. We can't have traffic going directly between area one and area two. Now, multiple areas are really only required if you've got a larger network. If you've got a small network, there's less destination networks in there, there's less routes, so it's not a problem if our routers know about all of those different routes. In that case, we don't need the hierarchical design and all routers can be in area zero. When you do have a single area design, it's always going to be area zero. Later on, if your network grows and you want to go to a multi-area design, this makes it really easy to migrate. So our configuration for configuring our different areas, the area is configured at the interface level with the network command. You see the example here, we've got network 10.0.0.0, a wildcard mask 0.0.255.255 area zero. So any interfaces on this router, which have got an IP address that falls within that range, will be enabled for OSPF and put in area zero. For a router to form an adjacency, its neighbor on the other side of the link must be configured to be in the same area. If you've got an area mismatch, the adjacency isn't going to come up and the routers are not going to share routes with each other. Moving on to our different router types. First off, we've got our backbone routers. A backbone router is a router where all its interfaces are in area zero. So this forms part of the transit area. With OSPF, routers maintain a full link state database of other routers and links in their own area. So your backbone routers will have the full link state database for all of the other links that are also in area zero. And whenever a OSPF route is received from a neighbor and that neighbor is in the same area, it will show up in the routing table as an intra-area route. You see in the example show IP route output here, 
all the different types that are shown in bold are different types of OSPF routes. We can have intra-area routes, which means the destination network is in the same area, an inter-area route where it's in a different area, or an external route, meaning it was redistributed into OSPF. So the example here, I can see we've got three routes. The prefix for all of them is O, so these are all intra-area routes received from the same area. The next type of router we've got is the ABR, our Area Border Router. Routers which have interfaces in multiple areas are ABRs. So you see the example here, I've highlighted the routers in red. I've got a router on the left here which has got one interface in area 0 and another interface in area 1. And our other ABR has got an interface in area 0 and another interface in area 2. The characteristics of the ABRs, they separate the flooding zones. This is what really segregates our network into the different areas and compartmentalizes our network. So if we have a link goes up or goes down in that area, it's going to keep the information just in that one area. It doesn't impact our other areas. You'll see how that works in a second when I show you the example. The ABR is also where we always do our summarization in OSPF. I'll say that again, in OSPF, summarization is always done on your ABRs. It functions regularly as the source for default routes, for other normal areas, normal routers in our normal areas and it maintains the link state database for each area with which it is connected. So if I go back a slide you see the ABR on the left here it's going to have the full link state database for area 0 so it knows about all the individual networks in area 0 and it also has the full link state database for area 1. Our ABR on the right here, it will have the full LSDB for area 0 and for area 2, but it only has summary information for area 1. Ideal design is to have each ABR connected to two areas only, the backbone and another normal area. An important point is that your ABRs do not automatically summarize you need to do this manually. And if you don't manually configure summarization, all routes will be flooded everywhere. So the network will basically behave like it was all in one big area. So again, the point of doing our multiple areas is for larger networks, takes up less resources, puts less load on the routers. But you don't need to just configure the different areas. You also need to configure summarization on ABRs to really get any benefit from it. So looking at how we're going to configure it here, R2 is our ABR. It's got an interface in area 0, which is fast Ethernet 1 slash 0, and fast 0 slash 0 is in area 1. At global config, we say router OSPF1, and then network 10.1.0.0, 0.0.255.255 .0 is in area 0. So that will put interface fast 1 slash 0 into area 0, and then network 10.0.0.0, 0.0.255.255 .0 goes in area 1. That is fast 0 slash 0. Then, to get the benefit of our different areas, we need to do summarization on the ABR. So you'll notice that we've got all of our networks over here on the left in area 0. I've got 10.1.1.0 slash 24. 10.1.0.0 slash 24. So all the networks on the left begin with 10.1. They're all 10.1.x.x slash 24 networks. So I can summarize those into 10.1.0.0 slash 16. The command to do that, the routes are in area 0, so I say area 0 range 10.1.0.0, And over in the right hand side of the network in area 1, my routes there are 10.0.0.0 24, 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and 10.0.2.0 slash 24. So all of the networks over on the right, they all begin with 10.0 and their slash 24s. Rather than advertising all of those individual slash 24 networks over to area 0 on the left, 
I'm going to summarize it to a single slash 16 route. So the command I enter is area 1, because it's over in area 1, range 10.0.0.0, The effect that you'll get from this now is R1 over in area 0. Rather than having routes to 10.0.0 slash 24, 10.0.1 slash 24, and 10.0.2 slash 24, it just has a single summary route for 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So there's less routes on R1, so that takes up less resources on the router. The other benefit you get from this is, let's say that the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 link goes down. Well, all of my other routers that are in area one will have to reconverge, see if they can find a better path to get there. So R3 and R4 will have to recalculate, they'll have to do work to update their routing table about the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network going down. But if you look at it from the point of view of R1, well, its summary route still stays the same. If any of these individual routes here go down, our 10.0.0.0 slash 16 route is still good. So if we have an outage in a different area, it doesn't affect the routers that are in this area. So less routes in your router, so it takes up less memory, and also outages, the impact is confined to just that one area, so it takes up less CPU resources on your routers as well. So that's why we want to have multi-areas when we've got larger networks. When we look in the routing table, our inter-area routes, so a route that was learned from an ABR, which is in another area, will show up as type OIA for inter-area routes. So you see the example output here, I've got a couple of intra-area routes. The bottom two destinations are within the same area as this router. And I've got an inter-area route, which is in another area. And inter-area routes are always learned from an ABR. They're the border between our areas and they're where we do our summarization. The next type of router is a normal area router. This is a router where all of its interfaces are just in one normal area. So you can see highlighted in red on the left, I've got three routers which are area one routers, all of their interfaces are in area one, and I've got an area two router over here on the right. Again, these routers will maintain the full link state database for the areas which they're a member of. So all the Area 1 routers will have the full LSDB for Area 1. They will have summary routes for Area 0 and Area 2 that they learned from the ABR. And our Area 2 router will have the full LSDB for Area 2, summary routes for Area 1 and Area 0. Our last type of router is an ASBR, an Autonomous System Boundary Router. So ABR is an area border router, ASBR is Autonomous System Boundary Router. What an ASBR is, it means that on that router it's running OSPF and we're redistributing from another source into OSPF. So maybe we're also running EIGRP or RIP on that router. We're taking our EIGRP or RIP routes and we're redistributing them into OSPF. So they'll also be advertised to our OSPF neighbors. Or maybe it's a static route that we're redistributing into OSPF. So again, an ASBR, it just means we're redistributing into OSPF on that router. Our redistributed routes show up as external routes. So an external route does not mean it's outside this enterprise, outside this organization. It literally means it was redistributed into OSPF. And if you look in the routing table, this will show up as a type O, E, either E1 or E2 for an external route. So where it says O, that means it was an intra-area route, the destination's in the same area. IA is an inter-area route, it's from another area learned by an ABR, and E2 means it was redistributed into OSPF. Okay, so that is our OSPF areas. I'll see you in the next lecture for a lab demo. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad-free, 
right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.